Hi guys, and welcome back to Petrolhead Podcasts. The Lamborghini Urus has been one of the most sought after luxury SUVs since its introduction in 2018 and has offered buyers supercar like looks and driving experience in an SUV package. Inevitably, its success has prompted rival manufacturers to come up with compelling alternatives, such as the BMW XM label, the Aston Martin DBX 707, and the Porsche Cayenne Turbo GT. In response, Lamborghini has recently given the Urus a mid-cycle refresh for the 2025 model year and added a plug-in hybrid powertrain to the car to create the Urus SE. But are the changes enough for the Urus to stay competitive? And additionally, which of these four is the ultimate super SUV? Join me as I go through an in-depth comparison to find out. First of all, looking at exterior styling, the new Urus SE looks great. It retains the Urus's basic design that has won many fans around the world, with highlights up front including the new and more aggressive hood, the new Matrix LED headlights with a C-shaped light signature and a more aggressive looking front bumper that work great together. On the side, nothing has changed and the Urus SE retains the angular and bold look of the previous model. I don't like the multiple angular indents in the side profile, as well as the small window, which don't look muscular enough for an SUV in my opinion. Round back, the new grille surrounding the taillights is a nice touch and so is the aggressive rear diffuser. The Aston Martin DBX does not look as good as the Urus up front. The grille is perhaps too big for the car and feels oddly shaped. The teardrop-like headlights also look too plain and not unique enough. On the side, the DBX looks great, with clean, smooth surfacing and good proportions, although the hockey stick-like indent near the bottom of the doors is a bit unnecessary. Round back, the car also looks good, with a taillight design inspired by the Aston Martin Vantage that looks very sporty and flows nicely into the integrated spoiler and the aggressive diffuser section is perfect for a car like this. The BMW XM's design can be described as incohesive. Up front, the huge kidney grills are a bit over the top, even for a car the size of the XM. The split headlight design is also not the most elegant, with the daytime running lights section perhaps a bit too narrow. The angular and strange lower bumper, including the black painted central section, also feel incohesive. On the side, the XM's proportions are good, and thankfully the profile is mostly smooth and elegant. There are still weird design elements, such as the painted line between the door handles and the windows and a D-pillar that feels too bloated. Round back is probably the XM's best angle, with sleek and slim taillights, an aggressive quad exhaust setup but the double BMW logos in the windows and offset XM badge look strange. Lastly, the Porsche Cayenne Turbo GT is a welcome return to normalcy in this company. Up front, the signature 4-dot Porsche and LED lights look great. The lower bumper section is a little too aggressive, especially compared to the previous generation Turbo GT, but remains good looking. On the side, the Porsche has the least faults of the four, with elegant and smooth surfacing, a lack of any fussy details, and an attractively sloping coupe roof line. The gold wheels add a nice bit of flair to an otherwise restrained design. Round back, the Cayenne again looks great, with the signature Porsche light bar looking modern and upmarket, and the massive dual oval exhaust look great too. Overall, the best looking of the four is the Porsche, which manages to look expensive, sporty and modern without resorting to over-the-top styling elements. In second is the Lamborghini, which has a nicely updated front-end design, but the side profile has too many elements. In third is the Aston Martin, which has a nice side and rear view, but an overly aggressive front-end. In last is the BMW, which feels incohesive no matter which angle you look at it. Moving on to interiors, and the Lamborghini impresses with multiple angular elements inspired by Lamborghini's supercars such as the Huracan and Aventador. The fighter jet style starter button, drive mode selector, and large carbon fiber shift paddles look and feel great. Material quality is great, and the Volkswagen MIB-based infotainment software is easy enough to use, although it's not as modern or feature-rich as the BMW iDrive system. However, the general design of the cabin is beginning to show its age, with the old-looking air vents and door cards and a steering wheel borrowed from Audi cars. Practicality in the Urus is decent, with good amounts of front and rear legroom and a total 56.4 cubic feet of cargo volume behind the first row. Moving on to the Aston Martin and the DBX recently benefited from an update that has brought an all-new interior featuring new displays, a new steering wheel, and a new center console inspired by the new DB12 sports car. Aston Martin's new in-house user interface is an improvement over the aging Mercedes-based systems in the old car, with bigger displays, higher resolution, and touchscreen functionality for the first time. The new center console area is also much more organized and simplified compared to the old car, and thankfully a lot of physical buttons have been retained. The interior in general looks modern and upmarket, and the blend of leather and carbon fiber feels expensive. In terms of practicality, the DBX has 41.7 inches of front legroom, 40.9 inches of rear legroom, and 54 cubic feet of cargo volume behind the first row. The BMW XM has a modern and well-built interior. The BMW curved display setup running iDrive 8.5 is the most advanced infotainment system of the four cars with excellent graphics and is very feature-rich. Highlights in the XM's interior include the LED lighting in the roof, the carbon fiber trim, and the aggressively bolstered M Sports seats. 
However, the interior, while looking and feeling modern, is too plain in my opinion, with the steering wheel, gear selector, iDrive controller, and other parts of the interior shared with other BMW models, not exclusive enough in this company. In terms of practicality, the XM is excellent, with 40.4 inches of front legroom, 40.3 inches of rear legroom, and a maximum of 64.3 cubic feet of cargo volume with the rear seats folded. Lastly, the Cayenne Turbo GT has a well-built and good-looking interior. Highlights specific to the Turbo GT include the Racetech's covered dashboard, steering wheel and sports seats, and other elements of the 2024 Cayenne facelift also feature, including the fully digital instrument cluster borrowed from the Taycan, as well as the passenger display and new center console. Build and material quality is also very good in the Cayenne, but just like the XM, the interior is not special enough, as it shares too many elements with base spec Cayennes. In terms of practicality, the Cayenne is not the best, with good amounts of front and rear legroom, but only 52.5 cubic feet of cargo capacity with the rear seats folded. Overall for interiors, the best is the Aston Martin, blending modern design and technology with a bespoke look and great build and material quality. In second is the BMW, which has the best infotainment, good build quality, and the biggest cargo volume. Unfortunately, some of the parts shared with other BMW models affects the ambience. In third is the Porsche, which has excellent build and material quality and a modern look. Although the design is not special enough compared to the DBX and Urus, and the car's cargo capacity is the lowest of the four. In last is the Urus. The Lamborghini has an exquisite look, but shares too many parts with other Volkswagen Group products, and the design is aging compared to the other cars. In terms of drivetrain, the Lamborghini Urus SE has a 4-liter twin-turbo V8 with a plug-in hybrid component that deliver a combined 789 horsepower and 701 pound-feet of torque. This is mated to an 8-speed automatic transmission and an all-wheel drive system. The Eurus features air suspension, adjustable damping, and electronic rear differential with torque vectoring, active anti-roll bars, and rear wheel steering. With a 25.7 kilowatt hour battery, the Eurus achieves an all-electric range of around 37 miles. The Eurus SE accelerates to 60 miles per hour in around 3.1 seconds, and combined fuel economy is around 18 miles per gallon. The Aston Martin DBX 707 has a Mercedes-Benz sourced 4-liter twin-turbo V8, producing 697 horsepower and 663 pound-feet of torque, mated to a 9-speed automatic transmission, also from Mercedes, and an all-wheel drive system. The DBX has air suspension, adaptive dampers, active anti-roll bars, and an electronic limited slip rear differential, but no rear-wheel steering is available. The DBX accelerates from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 3.1 seconds, and achieves a combined economy of 17 miles per gallon. The BMW XM label has a 4.4-liter twin-turbo V8 with a plug-in hybrid component that deliver a combined 738 horsepower and 738 pound-feet of torque. This is mated to an 8-speed automatic transmission and an all-wheel drive system. The XM uses coil springs rather than air suspension and comes with adaptive damping, active anti-roll bars, a limited slip, rear differential, and rear wheel steering. With a 19.2 kilowatt-hour battery, the XM achieves an all-electric range of 30 miles. 0 to 60 miles per hour takes 3.7 seconds, and the XM achieves a combined economy of 14 miles per gallon. The Porsche Cayenne Turbo GT has a 4-liter twin-turbo V8 with 650 horsepower and 626 pound-feet of torque. This is mated to an 8-speed automatic transmission, sending power to an all-wheel drive system. An air suspension system, adaptive damping, and electronic rear differential with torque vectoring, active anti-roll bars, and rear axle steering are all standard on the Turbo GT. The Cayenne accelerates from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 3.1 seconds and achieves a combined economy of 16 miles per gallon. In terms of drivetrains, the most impressive of the four is the Lamborghini, which is the most powerful, has the added benefit of being a plug-in hybrid, and returns the best efficiency figures. In second is the Cayenne, which has an impressive array of chassis technologies and a powerful engine, but is lacking in efficiency. In equal third are the Aston Martin and BMW, which both have impressive powertrain setups but are lacking rear-wheel steering and an air suspension system, respectively. In terms of driving experience, the Lamborghini impresses with the drama it offers. The charismatic and responsive 4-liter V8 engine has world-class tuning, feeling powerful and sounding spectacular. This is combined with incredible grip and cornering abilities to deliver a special driving experience befitting of the Lamborghini badge. The Urus feels like a taller supercar to drive and has handling abilities that seem to defy physics. However, the trade-off is a ride quality that, while still compliant enough, can be brittle over poor surfaces and is not as comfortable as the Aston Martin and Porsche. The Aston Martin has a more laid-back driving experience. It has a noticeably smoother ride than the other three cars and is a relaxed and quiet cruiser. The Mercedes-derived V8 is an excellent engine, being powerful, responsive, and comes with a great soundtrack. In terms of handling, the DBX is not quite as sporty as the Eurus and Cayenne, but remains very well balanced with little body lean in corners and precise steering, even if ultimately it does not feel as hardcore. The BMW XM's driving experience is a mixed bag. 
the ride is unacceptably stiff, even in comfort mode, partly as a result of the choice to not offer the XM with air suspension, and partly due to the 6,000 pound mass, making the XM by far the heaviest of the four. As a result, the XM fails to deliver the luxurious driving experience that buyers expect at this price point. The benefit of the stiff ride is a car that feels very planted and agile through corners, despite the weight of the car, although critically speaking, the Lamborghini and Porsche deliver a more cohesive and engaging driving experience. Lastly, the Porsche Cayenne Turbo GT offers a fantastic driving experience. The Cayenne's driving dynamics are excellent, with the rear wheel steering and active anti-roll bar, ensuring there is very little body roll and an agile feeling through corners. The steering is also very well calibrated, and the whole car feels extremely cohesive and special to drive. The 4-liter twin-turbo V8 is a great engine, and tuning by Porsche Motorsport ensures even better responsiveness, drama, and power than in the regular Cayenne Turbo. The ride quality, while not quite as good as the Aston Martins, is still very comfortable and makes the Cayenne a relaxed daily cruiser. Overall, for driving experience, the Porsche is first with excellent handling coupled with a great ride quality. In second is the Lamborghini, which similarly has amazing handling and a special driving experience, but is less comfortable than the Porsche and Aston Martin. In third is the Aston Martin, which has the best ride quality and great handling, but is ultimately not as special to drive as the Porsche and Lamborghini. In last is the BMW. The stiff ride in the XM is unbecoming of an SUV so expensive, even if the XM's handling is very good. So overall, which is the best super SUV of the four, personally, the Porsche Cayenne Turbo GT is the winner here. The Cayenne offers supercar-like excitement and thrill in a package that is the most restrained and best looking, and is also surprisingly comfortable. The 2024 updates have also given the Cayenne an attractively modern and tech-focused interior. In second is the Aston Martin. The DBX 707 has the best interior of the four, the best ride quality, and is surprisingly agile and capable through corners. However, it ultimately lacks the theater and excitement of the Porsche and Lamborghini. In third place is the Lamborghini. The Urus SE has a brilliant plug-in hybrid powertrain and a mesmerizingly brilliant driving experience. Unfortunately, the interior is starting to feel dated. The exterior is too extrovert and aggressive, and the ride quality is not the best. In last place is the BMW XM label. The BMW has great driving dynamics and an excellent infotainment system, but the car has polarizing styling and a stiff ride. What do you guys think of this conclusion, and what are your thoughts on these four super SUVs? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, please like this video and subscribe to my channel to be the first to see more amazing content like this in the future. Cheers.